Hi there. This is episode four of a series that is teaching you how to write .NET applications on a Raspberry Pi using Windows and Visual Studio Code. We've had three episodes before this, so we've been able to configure a blank Raspberry Pi into headless mode and get file sharing working on it. Episode two, we looked at how to configure .NET 6 on the Raspberry Pi and, and write an application in VS Code. And then in episode three, we actually configured some GPIO ports on the Raspberry Pi to read the buttons that we could push and light an LED. In this episode, we're doing something slightly different. We're going to use a UART port, a serial port, and we're going to connect it to what's called a time of flight distance sensor. And this is a sensor that fires a laser and measures how long the laser takes to hit a target, an object, and then be bounced back and received back into the sensor. As you can imagine, that happens very quickly. But the particular sensor we're going to use will measure this down to a millimeter and measure up to a four meter distance. Now I have one of these in my garage where I have a sensor that measures how far the car is into the garage so that I can determine if the back of the car is actually wholly inside the garage. So that's just one use case. I'm sure there's many others, but let's get started. So welcome back to all the gear no idea. Welcome back. Today, as I said, we're going to write some code to talk to a time of flight distance sensor. In order to do that, we're going to have to wire it up to the Raspberry Pi. So I'll show you how to do that. We're going to have to configure a UART or serial port on the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll test it. And then finally, we'll write some C sharp code to write an application to read the distance measurements from the time of flight sensor. So let's get started. All of the files that you need for this episode and previous episodes are kept on my GitHub repository. So if you surf along to my Raspberry Pi repository, you'll see that there are a number of files for this episode. And one of them is the instructions file. So if you have a look at the instructions file, it's got a full description about the sensor, how to do the wiring, how to configure the port, some of the problems you might stumble across, and, and also the code. The VL53L1X time of flight sensor uses an I2C interface natively, but we're going to experiment with a version of this made by a company called Waveshare that publishes the distance measurements over a UART serial link. And that's what we're going to use. It's available from Pi Hut and we're going to connect it to our Raspberry Pi. The Waveshare time of flight sensor comes with two connectors, but we'll only use one. The laser sits behind a small window and this particular sensor comes with a set of cables, wires that we can use to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Let's wire up the sensor to the Raspberry Pi. Make sure the Raspberry Pi is turned off when you do this. We also don't need a breadboard for this stage. We're just gonna wire straight to the Raspberry Pi from the sensor. The sensor has four wires. It, the red wire is the VCC five volts. The black wire is the ground zero volts. The blue wire is the transmit wire. We won't need to use that. So whether you connect it or not, it won't matter. And the yellow wire is the receive wire. And that's where we're going to receive our distance measurements over. Let's wire up the sensor. The first wire is the red wire, which is the five volts and goes to pin four. Next is the black wire, which we put onto pin six. This is for the ground zero volts. The next wire is the transmit wire. We won't use this, but we'll plug it in anyway. It's the blue wire and goes to pin eight. And the final wire is the yellow one, which is the receive, and that goes to pin 10. So they're nicely all in a row. So red, black, blue, then yellow. If your wiring looks the same as mine, we're good to go. So power up the Raspberry Pi, boot it up. As soon as power is applied to the Raspberry Pi, you'll see that there's a green LED that flashes on the back of the sensor. This tells us that everything is operating normally and that power is reaching the sensor. It's time to configure the UART serial port on the Raspberry Pi now. 
To do this, just list out the set of devices that you've got and you'll see a list and you should see TTY AMA0. If you cat that device, which tests really if there's any traffic on it, you'll see that nothing comes back. That's because the UART port's not configured. So this is always a good test to see if it's working. So let's edit the config.txt file. This is in the boot directory. So let's use nano and do it with sudo so that we have privileges. We've opened up the file and we now have to look for the particular line that we're going to edit to add the UART configuration. This is where it says additional overlays and parameters are documented. And we need to type DT overlay equals UART zero underneath there. Write the file away, exit, and now it's time to reboot the Raspberry Pi. This should only take a few seconds. Then we'll shell back into the Raspberry Pi and do a quick test using the cat command. So we'll just check all our devices again. TTY AMA zero is there. We'll cat from the device. And look at that. We've got what appears to be random characters coming in on the receive UART port, but they in fact are the, the, the characters that will be generated there. They're all in a special format, but this proves that something is arriving on the receive UART pin. Now, sometimes you might find that you have permission denied, and this can be fixed by using a command called user mod to add the Pi user to the dial out group. Hopefully for you, this won't happen. Again, we'll reboot the Raspberry Pi. Wait a few seconds for that to reboot. Do the cat test again. And there we are, success. We're reading something from the serial port. It's now time to write and run some C-sharp code. Start up Visual Studio Code and hopefully you've got the previous application that we created in episode three. What we need to do, not only change the code, is we have to load a new package. And this is the system.io.ports package. So we do .NET add package system.io.ports and this will load that package into the environment so that we can talk to the UART ports. The next thing we have to do is load the program that I've written. So if you go to the GitHub, locate program.cs and then use this widget to copy the raw contents. So that will copy it and then we flip back to Visual Studio and we do Control A to select all the source code. And then we do Control V to paste in what we've just copied from GitHub. And now you've got the application that will talk to the UR serial port. It's now time to run the code. So let's run and debug. This will compile the application, download it to the Raspberry Pi and execute it. And here's the output. You can see the distance on the far right. Now, if I move my hand in front of the sensor, you'll see the numbers at the far right there going down and then back up to the 1.7 meters. And there we have it, a running application. So let's stop that, hold the application. Thanks for watching this episode of the timer flight sensor into the Raspberry Pi. We've learned how to configure it, run some code against it, and actually read from a UART port. So that's fantastic. If you want me to cover some other features of the Raspberry Pi, let me know. I can build another episode based on that. Um, I've provided behind the scenes information so you can see what cameras I use, um, what mistakes I've made along the way, and the lighting, the lenses, 
um, everything, how I basically construct the, the video. Uh, any feedback gratefully received, but hopefully see you in another episode. Until then, goodbye.